Hi everybody, it's Josh Dorkin with BiggerPockets.com here with yet another awesome interview. We've got Michael Zuber and uh, Mike is going to teach us a little bit about his landlording business. Uh, before we get there, uh, Mike can be found at his website WealthBuildingPro.com and MPJ Zuber is his username on BiggerPockets. So it's BiggerPockets.com slash users slash mpj zuber z u b e r and that is how we can find him on bigger pockets michael nice to meet you well we've met nice to see you again nice to see you as well thank you yeah 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 well thank you for uh agreeing to do this interview i i hope uh hope we get to get some juicy stuff out of you this is uh very exciting i'll do my best all right all right hey so you, you uh you mentioned on your profile, and, and a couple minutes ago as we were talking, you've been in the business for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, first, maybe you could tell us how you got started and um, you know what, what the inspiration for getting into real estate was. Sure. So uh, 10 years ago, sort of late 2000, early 2001, probably like a lot of you out there, we, were, uh, you know, we thought we had it figured out in the stock market game. Um, you know, that didn't turn out well uh, for lots of folks, us included. Yes. I, I, I'm prone to understatements, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, we knew we needed to do something else. And it was actually Olivia, uh, you know, my wife and partner in this that, uh, you know, had a contact in, in Fresno, California, which is about two and a half, three hours from where we call home in the Bay Area. And, uh, you know, that's that's where we sort of drove out there and, and uh you know, back when we started, we, you know, we, we were very simple. We, you know, we had one rule we got from a book, which was that one percent rule. Uh, for those of you that haven't heard it, right, the price of the house has got to be less than, uh, you know, we we we, uh, we found a, a place they could rent for eleven hundred, so the price had to be under one hundred and ten grand, and you know, we locked up a house for one hundred and seven. You know, mm -hmm. little did we know that that first house would lead to a lot more. So right. that's uh, that's where we started. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, a lot of people on bigger pockets. Push the two percent rule versus oh, the one percent, but you know, there's 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 lots of room for interpretation. I'm sure as as we yeah, yeah. I I was only answering the question, trying to think back to me being a rookie investor uh, ten years ago. It's certainly not a rule that we follow anymore. Right, it's right, just, right. Just where we started. We nice. we uh, we don't look at a deal unless we can make twenty percent cash on cash. We, okay. we don't even bother. That's great. Today, so uh, so so you mentioned that your your wife's your partner, Olivia. Yep. Um, uh, you and I again were talking a little earlier about about this, so you know, I think it's, uh, it's something worth discussing. Um, it's it's not easy to do this business, um, and and it's definitely not easy uh, without a support base. I guess um, mm -hmm. my question is, um, uh, actually, I don't know what my question is. I, I I'll let you kind of <laughs> rant and rave on on what I'm talking about, but you know, tell sure. me what you know. Having your wife being supportive, I'm I'm sure that's just meant the whole world for you, right? Yeah, I would not be in this business ten years later, or I should say, we would not be in this business ten years later if we didn't have each other to lean on. Yeah. You know, whether you're a rookie investor, you're doing your first deal or your tenth deal, or you have over a hundred properties or a hundred doors like we do, right. you're going to have bad months. You're going to have surprises. You're going to have expectations of 10, 12 grand a month in cash flow or 100 bucks in cash flow if you're just starting out. And stuff happens, right? ACs go out, water heaters blow up, tenants bail. Yep. And if you were counting on that 100 bucks and you've been telling your wife or you know, girlfriend or husband for that matter that the, you know, honey, it's, uh, we're going to have to dip in our bank account one more time, believe me, be the last time. Yeah. You know, there ain't no last time. Surprises yeah. happen in this business. You've got to have margin of safety. You've, you've got to have a plan and a portfolio that, that can survive those up and, ups and downs. And when you're starting out, you've only got one, right? You know, anything you miss, that's 100%. Whoops! Yeah, and um, you know I could not be in this business. We couldn't be in this business if we didn't uh, have the support of each other and, and you know the the knowledge that the future will be better than today. You know, and again we've been at it for a long time, so it's uh, critical support at home. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Um, you know, I, I I think you know there's enough pressure in the business itself without mm -hmm. having a nagging husband or a nagging wife or you know all those pressures just you know putting putting all this weight on your shoulders. So. Um, that's yeah, that's that's great. I think it's it's really important, and I think I'll emphasize that um, if if you don't have that support, you might want to think twice about doing it. And, oh and yeah, because it, it only goes bad. I mean, I've I've helped lots of people over the years, and 
you know, I call them, uh, you know, they, they come in just flashes, right? And then they don't have the support of a wife or a husband in the first hiccup, even if they buy something, even if they go that far and they buy something and something breaks, that's, that's just the end of that, their business and, and the relationship and gets really stressful. So yeah. talk to people at home, you know, make sure you're in it together or don't start. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Great, man. Well, listen, so, so you're a landlord, right? You don't, you don't mess around with, with all that other fancy stuff, right? Buy and hold. That's well, it. you know, I, my, my model is uh, buy, you know, make ready and hold. There you go. Right. Okay. I'm buying, I'm, you know, in this market, I'm buying distressed assets that uh, can't be, uh, you know, the competition's not the FHA buyer, right? So I'm buying stuff that's a little more distressed okay. than the average house. Um, but I'm buying them cheap, man. I'm buying from land value in most cases. Wow. Okay. And, uh, you know, then we put in 8 to 12K. And, you know, most of the time, that, that everybody wants to live in a house. So yeah. uh, houses are a great business right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me what, you know, you, you started this thing 10 years ago. Fast forward now, 10, ten years. You, you said you guys mm -hmm. have got 100 doors plus. Yeah. Um, 120. Yeah. 120. Okay. And um, I, I guess, you know, let's let's kind of talk about some of the ups, the downs, the ins and the outs. Sure. What, what would you say um, – what would you say was was the most challenging deal? Uh, and I'm assuming I'm assuming maybe it was your first, but uh. wow, most challenging deal. Um, well, you know, we've done probably I don't know co combined eighty transactions, and there's there's lessons to be learned in all of them. Sure. Uh, I remember one house I bought was uh, supposed to be two houses on one lot. Okay. Right. So you, the idea, you know, you, you pay a little bit more, but you get two uh, two uh, rental proceeds. Two for the price of one. Yeah, two for the price of one, exactly. You know, right. and I've done it a lot, but yeah. uh, this one didn't turn out so well. You know, we ended up having to tear down the 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 uh, one of the units due to code violations. Oh, so nice. it's uh, you know overpaid, but uh, you know stubbed a toe, learned a lesson, and right. uh, every time I drive by that house, I remember. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, something that's 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 interesting is is uh, you know again in my market in Fresno. I feel like we're uh, we're we rode a pretty good wave, you know, from 2001 to call it 2006 in Fresno. You know, we we'd only bought I think together nine, ten properties, right? Just single family houses, a duplex here or there. Okay. But uh, you know, prices took off, and we we 1031, we refied some deals, and um, you know, we 1031 that money into apartment buildings. Why? Because we realized that we couldn't buy what we had for anything close to what we bought them for. So, you know, luckily we moved a lot of our equity out of houses uh, near the peak into apartments. So, uh, you know, that's how you go from a handful of greenhouses to a couple of red hotels. And, yeah. you know, the last couple of years we've been building the foundation again. We've done know, almost 20 transactions here in the last 12, maybe 16 months. Okay. And, uh, you know, 25, 26 doors just there. So it's, it's a fun ride. So we're going to, yeah. you know, keep buying greenhouses. That's why my uh, my picture on Bigger Pockets is that greenhouse because that's yeah, what yeah. you got to buy. But uh, I'll step up and put a picture there eventually. All right. We all know yeah. what you look like now, man. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I got nothing to hide now. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's about buying the greenhouses right now. I would tell everybody out there, you, you know, certainly if you're you're, you're starting out, it's about buying the greenhouses. Um, you know, in my market, we probably got three or four years. Other market, maybe as short as two or three. But buy the greenhouses. I mean, if you've got, you know, I, I tell buddies of mine, uh, you know, they need to buy a house, you know, a rental house for every kid they have, right? Because that becomes their college fund, yeah. right? 10, 15, you know, 20 years from now. I mean, life's different. Oh, yeah. Right? You know, if you can buy stuff for, you know, 15, 20 cents on the dollar, 30% of replacement cost, I mean, eventually it'll come back. You know? Yeah. Don't ask me what eventually is. Yeah, that's the big, that's the <laughs> Not big tomorrow. Question. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you, you talked about ten, doing a 1031 exchange. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so far, you know, this being my third interview now, um, we haven't – the topic hasn't come up. So, so I thought it would be interesting to, to get into sure. a little bit. Um, uh, why don't you I, – I guess – Talk, talk to us a little bit about the experience of, of actually going through uh, the, the whole process of a 1031, sure. get, disposing of one property, picking up another, and, and you know all the details yep. that go in between. Because I've never done it. Um, it sounds sure. sounds like it's a, a process. Um, it sounds like it could be a headache, and there's there's time limits, and there's all sorts mm -hmm. of details in there. So yeah. um, maybe you can walk us through a little bit. Sure, not an expert. You know, I've done ten of them probably. Okay. So I, I'll I'll give you the answer as a Participant, not as a lawyer or an attorney yeah, or anything. Absolutely. That way, I give the little caveats, and I'll get in trouble if I miss something. Oh yeah, there you go. 
Yeah, Michael is not an expert. Please, uh, this this <laughs> only this my flavor. experience. Yeah, there you go. So, um, you know, basically, the, you've just like a lot of things in real estate, you got to have a plan going in. So, you know, we for example, the first house we bought at one hundred and seven grand that, that I referenced earlier, we we ended up selling that for two hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars about three years after we bought it. So, just phenomenal growth, yeah. right? So, you know, we could have taken a check for about one hundred and sixty, one hundred and seventy grand, right? Because we had some equity in the deal. And uh, instead of doing that, we 1031 that into a 10-unit uh, apartment building that we picked up for uh, just under half a million bucks. Gotcha. So we took all the equity out of a house and we moved it uh, into the 10 unit. So there's a little bit of a process there. In my case, what I had done is I knew I wanted to sell something. So in, and I knew there were time limits involved. And you got to remember, this is 2004, 2005. So the market is 360 degrees different than today. So it was hot. So I actually went in and identified the property I wanted first, right? Uh, and then realized, you know, okay, I got something. I got a couple of things that I have lines on, uh, my eyes on. Uh, so once I did that, I listed my house because I had an offer the next day. Gotcha. Uh, got that in escrow, closed that. That money went to an intermediary because I can't touch it. If I touch it, I get taxed. Um, and then, you know, I went after a couple of properties, negotiated hard, got the one. Uh, ten unit building and uh, went on and closed that. Right uh, now, now with, with the ten thirty one, you you actually need to identify those properties. And I f I forget what the limits are. I don't know if there actually are limits, but uh, there, the top, right, there are right. Um, yeah. So you typically, you get ninety days after you open escrow in the intermediary to identify properties. Right. I think it's you can identify three to six properties, but thought, then yeah. yeah, then you've got to close them, and then you have six months to close them. I short circuited that whole process. I had my eyes on stuff before I listed because, again, you got to remember it's 2006 and the market was smoking for houses. Right. So um, I had my lines on, pre negotiated some stuff, sold mine, opened escrow, went after those two. So gotcha. we actually closed the second piece of the 1031 probably 20 days after we closed the first leg. They call them legs for you know, leg one, leg two. You know, attorneys justifying their business, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Whatever. There you go. So and and you get the the tax savings of of not yep. having the to pay tax savings. The basis is pushed through, so yep. I've never was taxed. Yep, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. I recommend. You know, I talked about those greenhouses. I mean, that's what all of us should be thinking about: is buying yep. as many greenhouses, you know, and then getting some uh, red hotels. You know, in yep. five, eight, ten years. Absolutely. All right. So uh, let let me think here. There's there's something I and I'm not sure. There was there was a topic that came up on Bigger Pockets in the past week, and I'm not sure if you read it. It was about the the professional landlord from hell, the professional tenant from hell. Uh, sure. Did, did you have a chance to, to read that? I have I've I've had experience with some of those. You, so. you do. Well, this guy. I mean, this guy really took the cake. This was you know this guy um, was you know tying tying everything up in court, and he was getting judges kicked off. He was I mean yeah. crazy crazy story. But you know it gets me to to thinking. It's it's a challenge being a landlord. Sure. You know, it's definitely not easy. You know, I've had mm -hmm. my share of some absolute craziness. I'm sure you have. Um, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Woo. yeah. Exactly. Um, you so, don't get these this, these wrinkles for nothing, man. Yeah, these are all well learned. What, that's what I'm talking about. So so tell me. Um, you know, as as a, you know, as a as a full you know as a landlord who's who's pretty successful. Um, what would you say the most important thing in in your process is? Is it um, is it the screening? Is it the post screening when you do your first walkthrough and you're you know uh, you're, you're making sure that you know everything's just checked off, everything's uh, copacetic? What, you know, for you, what's what's the goal? You know, where's the, the, the potential? The number one thing is to not not um, let a bad tenant move in your property, and it's yeah. it's it's tough, right? So yeah. Some people know how to work the system. Um, you've got to have your checks and balances and follow them every time. Yeah. You should be afraid of someone who comes in and says, you know what, I'm the best tenant from wherever. Here's all my references and I got to be in tomorrow. Yeah. It's probably not a good sign. Yeah. You know, you got to look for those things. So uh, I love to do the drive, have my guys do the drive by of the, where they're currently living. It's great. Right? Great advice. Yeah. You, know, you, you do that. You, you do the references and you, 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 uh, if you can, um, Ask the landlord you're calling about where was the previous place because they should have a file, assuming it's not just a total mom and pop organization, right. where they were so you can call one level back 
um, you know, that's where you usually get the truth. You know, there's always that great fear that the landlord you're calling and wants them out. Wants them out, right? Yep. Yeah. So that's why I think drive by, uh, occasionally knocking on the door if they see any kind of red flags, and you know, if the house inside's a mess or kids are running around, you know, sorry. Uh, I'd Wait, rather so have you a don't lease to people with kids. What? Come on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love people with kids. They they love to stay. I love them near schools. Exactly. But, you yeah. Know, if they're absolutely. running around and you know throwing balls at windows and you know <laughs> just stuff like that. I, I don't need those headaches. I don't need a broken window every other day. That's right. not fun. Right. 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 Um, so no, that's 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 great information. So your your criteria um, for screening, I, I I think it's it's pretty important. That definitely yeah. the house visit now. Um, Somebody had mentioned uh, in the past couple of weeks. I I read something about um, doing, you know, the, their their process included doing these periodic um, inspections. Um, sure. What I guess uh, what would your criteria be? Because again, everybody's kind of got their yeah, own. Yeah, we we have our leases that we can get. First off, we can get into any property we own in 24 hours. Just post a notice and get in. Right. If, yeah. we have, if we've been alerted, typically we we talk to neighbors ahead yeah. of time to let them know this is our property and call us we live on business card all that stuff right so we're trying to we're trying to circle the family that's moving in with people that will watch them ideally right, right. um so we get early warnings that way um but yeah we we at least yearly uh and if we have any any suspicions every six months yeah uh, but we've had some people in properties for you know i think their longest at this point seven or eight years you know at some point Rents like clockwork. They haven't been a problem in the past. You just let them go, honestly. Right, right. Uh, that first, that first year or two is the hardest. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's great advice. You know, the the whole using the neighbors and you, using other folks in the area as as a resource is really really important. And I think, you know, w when you're first looking at a property and you're first investigating it, you know. Mm -hmm. What I would do is, you know, actually knock on the door of the neighbors and find out what's going on with the property. And and I Absolutely. think I think you get a very big red flag if you know if the neighbors are difficult or, or you don't want to deal with the neighbors. Suddenly, you know, okay, well, the neighbors are tough. I can't rely on anybody to give me a good idea of what's yep. happening in my property. Maybe I should look at another one. And in this market, there is always another one. Yep. Absolutely. So tell me, uh, what's what's like the craziest? I mean, like the worst, craziest tenant si situation. Worst story. Oh, uh, there's so with. many. Oh. Uh, I guess the one. Yeah, the one. I guess the one that uh, gets a chuckle out of folks, or I don't know, gets gets a, a sad face is. Uh, I moved a brand new Section Eight tenant into a property into one of my apartments, uh, two bedroom, one bath, six fifty, past inspection. You know, the guys, you know, it, everything checked out. What happened about three months later is we went. To, we were at the property just doing routine maintenance, and we saw somebody else come out of his property or out of his unit. And the guy said he lived there. So we originally thought it was a roommate issue. Right. Right. Hey, we got to get somebody else on the lease. Rent. Rent was still being paid. It wasn't like rent wasn't being paid. Uh, but it turned out this guy subletted it, and um, you know, subletted it, gave it whatever the answer was. Right. He, and he wasn't being a problem. Right. But, but we went to the guy and said, okay, you know, we, we, uh, we realized that you know, Joe Bob's not there anymore and we'd really like to get you on the lease so we can hold you accountable. But thank you, by the way, for paying your rent. And uh, you know, we, we tried to do that and he was um, not interested in participating right. with us. So we, we issued a three-day to, to perform or, or get out. Yeah. And uh, on day two, he decided to throw a, a party for him and all his hoodlum friends and decided to destroy the unit, break Every wall, destroy the toilets, you know, just just went off, right? Police came, neighbors called, police couldn't get in, you know, the whole bit. Right. And uh, he was gone the next day and, you know, I had $6,000 in repairs and, you know, some other tenants to go uh, say uh, I'm sorry to. So, nice. you know, uh, n nothing in my process would have caught that, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, it was only the good... I, you know, sometimes I question myself honestly. If I would have, if we would not have seen the guy coming out, he probably would have still paid his rent. Right. It turned out the guy was uh, wanted by the police. Oh, there you go. You know, so he was he was probably okay just hiding and paying his rent so he wouldn't get a you know knock on the door for yeah. evictions. But uh, I don't. Wow. So well, but and, and and you know, I think I think it's it's important. You know, I mean, all these stories are important to to look at because there's always the lesson there, right? You know, what yep. what what's the lesson with this one is well. Well, you don't want to let it go, but you know, no. clearly you don't. No, you, I have a process. Yeah, you've you got to be on the lease if you're living in my unit. Yeah. And, no. you know, I don't, uh, 
I don't regret it. I mean, I sometimes, again, I wonder just curiously if I would have just let him stay. But, I mean, that's that's against our policy. Yeah, absolutely. And, no, uh, but what I was going to get at was, was, was the, uh, you know, having the, having the resources, ha- having the resources, the capital hmm? to protect yourself, right? I mean, you know, that sure. cost you seven grand. You, you, I mean, it's, it's not a day goes by that I, that I read some new real estate investor saying, Hey, I want to get into buy and hold. And I've got some, I've got some reserves. I got a couple bucks of cash on the side and my expenses are just going to be, you know, mortgage and insurance. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And then you have all these guys, not only, not only do you have gurus who are teaching people that, you know, that's all you got to worry about. But yeah, you know, there's there's all these other coaches and and people at your local RIA and all this stuff. The, these folks who are saying, you, you know, don't worry, you just you know just need a couple bucks. Well, in your situation, shoot, man, you, you know that's that's seven G's to repair on top yeah, of whatever. Yeah, six hundred six hundred dollar unit, seven G's to fix a seven hundred dollar yeah you know yeah. or six hundred dollar rent unit. So that's that's painful. Yep. yep. You know, it so, takes a year to get that back. Yeah, it's a tough story, man. But. Uh, that's- and there's it's only and, one in ten years, and there's nothing preventable about that, like you said. I mean, there's no, you know. No, I, I've gone it back through with the team, and there's nothing we could have done. Yeah, yeah, you know, everything checked out. T's eyes were dotted, T's were crossed, and you know, life happens sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Section eight. You mentioned uh, section eight. Mm-hmm. I've worked with section eight. Have had uh, mixed results. Uh, sure, to say the least. Uh, how about yourself? What's your experience been? Yeah, I've, I've read some articles on, on – there are certainly opinions out on Bigger Pockets about Section 8. I personally am a fan of the program. Sure. Again, it, it may have more to do with the city and county that, that you choose to invest in. Yeah. Um, I would tell you that probably – let me think. Certainly 40 doors of our 120 are Section 8 tenants. And I would tell you I've had more problems with non-Section 8 tenants than Section 8 tenants. Okay. I mean there's always – Always issues, right? This, these are human beings, and they all have lives. Right. And life, you know, life happens, as we said. But uh, in general, uh, Section Eight has been very good for us. Well, uh, and, and I like the fact that Section Eight inspects the properties also. Yeah, you know, it holds me and the tenant accountable. So. Absolutely. No, I, I agree. I, I think you know the, the great thing about the program is is not only that, but also that the tenants are are held accountable. You know, if, if mm-hmm. they if they screw up. They're out yep. of the program and they're no longer uh, getting supported, right? So yes, yeah, so, some of my uh, largest smiles are when I get a Section Eight tenant kicked out of the program. Yep, I, I must admit because yeah, they they clearly are are, are uh, taking a voucher away from a deserving family, and yeah. you know I don't go after people to get them out of the program unless they're you know violating the, the, the program because I want my checks, but. You know, I, I've got enough scratch behind me where if I see someone doing something that's just ethically wrong, that I'm going to go fix that. Yeah. So. What about how, us? how I am? No, oh, that's great. That's great. Tell me um, evictions. Mm-hmm. That's, that's another. Uh, it's another big one, right? Uh, sure. For for the noobs, uh, yeah. tossing tossing somebody out of your unit who's a day yeah. or two or three late, you know, is something yeah. that. It's hard, you know. It's it's not something that comes naturally, and and a lot of people, yeah, are inclined to believe that landlords are bloodless, heartless, soulless bastards because you know we evict people, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, in the end, it's it's if they're not paying, they're not paying. Uh, tell me, what's your you know what's your eviction? You know, I'm, I'm guessing you're, you know, late on the first notice yeah. goes up. Yeah. So so first off, I. I uh, you know, I uh, I actually get this question quite a bit from from new folks that you know talk to Olivia or I. And and first off, you both get into an agreement. You both sign on the dotted line when you move someone in. It says that you agree to pay for a safe and secure property, and they agree to pay you rent on the first. So, you know, if you want to call me, you know, heartless, so what? So be it. Um, you know, I I've been called a lot worse. Let, let me tell you. <laughs> but uh, as far as how it goes with me, typically what we do is uh, in California. We give them to the fifth, right, or the first work day after the fifth. So it could be the sixth or seventh if it's on a weekend. Uh, we then post a three-day notice so they can get to the tenth, you know, tenth or eleventh, depending on when the weekend falls. Mm-hmm. And then we can we file and we start eviction processes. Yeah. I would tell you that in fairness and in reality, uh, typically we will we will file the eviction by the fourteenth or fifteenth. We typically. Um, Work with our tenants, ask them some questions because again, most of them we've had a while, yeah. And uh, most of them, especially if they call us ahead of time, yeah. Uh, but we don't let anybody get past the fifteenth, right? Fifteenth, half a month in California, you've got at least forty-five days, and in this market, more like sixty days 
before they're out. Right. Um, you know, so if they're already down two weeks, throw on top of that the worst case sixty days plus another two weeks to repair, make ready, right over, yeah. and start again. You know, you're looking at three and a half, four months of no rent from that uh, rental. So uh, the fifteenth okay. is our drop dead day. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so you, you know, I mean, you will look at it on a on a case by case basis. Where you know, I, there are many landlords who mm-hmm. will will be, you know, yeah, the, the, very yeah. The only hard it. hard rule I have is you only lie to me once. Yeah. You know, if you if you say A and it's not A, right? A date, a time, a price, a number, you're off the list. I, I give every one of my tenants one chance, and we have a file we track them, so right. um, they all get one chance. Because gotcha. you know, I grew up, you know, pretty poor growing up, so I mean, I know how you know families stretch a dollar. So you know, maybe it's my uh, my upbringing that gives me a little uh, a little you know softness. But yeah, the fifteenth is is the end of it, and they're gone. Well, don't let any of your tenants watch this and, and know that you're soft, man. You're in trouble. Yeah, you know, hey, they want to try it. I got more scratch than they have than they have, they have scratch. <laughs> <laughs> they can yeah. try it if they want. Yeah, I'll yeah. fuck up the credit too. <laughs> uh, that's great. Well, listen, tell me uh, before we, we wrap this thing up, tell me, um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, I, I do like to try and lean and try and find advice in, in, in all these interviews, particularly mm-hmm. for, for the newer newer guys out there um the the more uh experienced folk have have figured a lot of this stuff out so i think it really is valuable for new guys what what would you you know pick a couple things two three bits of advice and you know throw it out there tell us you know okay getting started as a a landlord what you know yeah so i think first and foremost is uh you know we talked about earlier having the support at home right make sure you're one team after this because it's not a get rich quick scheme no matter who you see on tv or who you read it just ain't gonna happen right thank right. you so <laughs> thank you for yeah, saying just that no seriously not gonna happen yeah. so the second thing is 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 do the work um i cannot tell you how many times i get a new investor a friend a family member come tap me on the shoulder and say hey mike you know next time you find a good deal that you don't want give it to me I'm like what are you kidding me every good deal we find we buy yeah the heck am I, you know <laughs> I'm just not a charity. Uh, I get a lot of people that don't want to do the work. You know, I, I look at my market a couple of times every day. I talk to 10, 12 agents a week. Um, and we go see the properties. You know, we have lists of properties that we're tracking. So do the work. Yeah. You know, if you're lucky enough to live in your market, go do the work. Yeah. Um, that's what a lot of newbies are just hoping there's some silver bullet and they go see. But the, the, the thing that annoys me the most is when I, when I try to help someone and they go, I, I, I found five properties. I saw all five. I'm going to offer on two of them. Mm-hmm. How do you know if those two are the right? You've only looked at five properties. Yeah. Where are your comparables? It's just insane. Yeah. I don't. I tell everybody they got to look at 100 properties before I want to talk to them. Yeah. Right. Go build a spreadsheet. Do your models. I want to see your yields. What I call cash on cash. So, you know, don't. You got to do the work, and you got to continuously do the work. If you're going to be a landlord, a buy and hold person, your work doesn't stop the day you buy it. It mm-hmm. doesn't stop the day you do the make ready. It doesn't stop the day a tenant moves in. Right, you have to work every day at this business. Uh, but you know, is the is the streams turn into uh, trickles turn into streams turn into rivers? There, there's something at the end of this. So, yeah. uh, you know, do the work. That's great. That's great advice. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, don't get me started on politics because uh, <laughs> I, I think you know I, th- I think we are kind of heading in a, in a direction where people are getting lazy and people people expect a lot to be handed to them. And, and I think in particular in our business. Um, I, th- I think there's a lot of folks out there who who are spreading a bad message, um, sure. who are pitching things like you know getting rich quick and 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 not doing the work. You know, yeah. hire hire five virtual assistants and you can work four hours a week. You know, the four hour work week as a real estate investor. I'm gonna, you know, it just it's not a, it doesn't happen, right? I mean, yeah. doesn't happen. You gotta you gotta work to get somewhere. So that's yeah, I think that's fantastic. Um, well, we're we're starting to run out, man. So tell me, is there anything else you want to share? Any other, you know, tidbits, stories, tales, uh, you name it. No, I'm. Uh, if you have, anybody has questions for me, you know how to get a hold of me. Uh, MPJ Zuber uh, at uh, on the Bigger Pockets. That's my username, and I do a, uh, on the site that you referenced, WealthBuildingPro.com. I take time now to to write up uh, acquisition reports of the deals I'm doing. Just you know, and sort of the lessons I learned from each one. Uh, occasionally. You know, maybe there's a tidbit there for someone. You know, I, I'm, you know, we're in the market, you know, on a weekly basis at least. So, um, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get back, help some folks. That's great. That's great. Well, I, I think, 
we're working on something at Bigger Pockets, top secret right now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> at uh, <laughs> at some point, maybe we can uh, share some of those acquisition reports um, if people don't want to go to your site, which is of course sure. well. Hopefully, they do go to your site, wealthbuildingpro.com, and. Uh, yeah. I haven't checked them out yet myself, I'll be honest, but I will be going after I, I get off with you. Um, but uh, yeah, that, sound, that sounds great, man. It sounds very, uh, very valuable. Um, uh, beyond that, yeah, man, listen, it's a pleasure. It's, it's great talking to you. Maybe we can uh, continue the convo down the line and, and sure. get, get into some of the nitty gritty of, of landlording and, and uh, oh. the, the <laughs> something's happening. Yeah, but one of my dogs got excited. There you go. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, Michael, it's a, it's a pleasure. And uh, again, he is at biggerpockets.com/users/mpjzuber uh, and uh, wealthbuildingpro.com. It's been fun. I appreciate having you on board, and we will uh, we'll see you around Bigger Pockets. All right, man. Take care. All right, take Later. care.